we're here to talk about the best of the year. <sighs> we started with the worst. Now it's time to talk about what's good, the positive side of things. So let's kick it off. What do you got? The one I drove or didn't drive. This is going to be cars that we've driven. Driven? Yes. Does that have to be a new model year? <laughs> like how long ago? Well, I'm talking 15, 20 years ago. No, you can't go back 15, 20 years. <laughs> I, I mean, my favorite car that I drove this year is probably the Lexus, the RCF. Why? Because it's proper V8, rear-wheel drive, lots of power. It's just that stupid automatic, but, and that stupid screen, but other than that, driving it was fun. That's the best car there, you think? That I drove, right. Okay. The car, best car I didn't drive is probably that Mustang pile, the GT350. I'm sure that was a good car to drive. Okay, so that's your best car out of everything that we, that we had. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the best truck? The best truck? Did you have the Tundra this year? Yeah. Uh, that or the King Tut? Yeah. Which one? Though? Oh, I would never. I mean, I would never own the King Tut. Yeah, but, but if you had to, if you were going to say what was the better truck this year, was it the Tundra or the King Tut? The King Tut. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. As far as owning, did that take the Tundra? Okay. What about uh, mid-sized cars? What do you think? Well, the sedans, right? I mean, the Genesis. Does that count, or is that too yeah, long? Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. That's I guess you, if you the Genesis or the Optima. Okay. So you're going with the RCF, the King Tut, and the Genesis. Mm -hmm. Five liter. Oh, of course. Okay. And why did you why did you like the Genesis? Because it's everything a car should be. V8 again, four door saloon. Just a nice car. It's kind of like driving a German pile. But for a lot less money. Mm -hmm. And a lot less prestige. Well, prestige. yeah. But, no, you know, if you're really kind of a hardcore enthusiast, you don't really give a shit about it. Right, you just murder it and get rid of all emblems and no one would know. <laughs> yes. Plasti dip it. I think that's a good list, actually. It's kind of close to mine. Oh, we know what your car is going to be. What's that? The Miata. No, nah, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Get, come on. It, so these are the cars that I've driven this year. Oh, yeah, um, you drove a hundred more than I have. Well, yeah, but it's pretty close. The most affordable sports car is the Miata. That's in a affordable range, rear-wheel drive, lightweight. Well, look what I said after I was out in Galena with the Lexus. I'm like, I'd rather have the Miata out here. The Lexus is just too fast. Well, yeah. It you, makes no sense. Yeah, you get to that point where it's too much. So the Miata is the affordable one, okay? Your mid-level sports car is the GT350, and this is really the best car of the year for me. I would, I would say that too if I got to drive it, I'm sure. Yeah, it really is. This is something remarkable. Uh, I'll go back to the GT350 in a minute. And then that upper level is the RCF. I agree with you. That is, if you have a lot more money and you want more of a luxury car, the RCF is... Uh, it's kind of has a lot of what the GT350 has, but in a you know more like luxurious right, daily it's a luxury drivable version, right? With half the horsepower. Well, yeah, um, with less horsepower, but third. Uh, the best midsize car, and this has kind of been a big debate uh, on like the comments because of course midsize cars sell a million, so there's a lot more people interested in them. Between the Mazda Six and the Optima, <laughs> you would say the Mazda. Well, no, no, people are asking what oh, what I would okay. choose between the two. And there's only one reason I would put I would put the Optima as the car the midsize car of the year for me, and that is multiple motor choices. You actually can get a you can get three different four cylinders. <laughs> well, yeah, but you get real power output out of them. You don't feel like you're just putting along, and that alone is why I would choose the Optima over the Mazda Six. If you were somebody that didn't care about power output and just wanted fuel efficiency, you'd take the Mazda Six. Optima looks a hell of a lot better. Uh, yeah, that's debatable. I, I think that the Mazda 6 looks pretty good, actually. I, I do. I think it looks better than the Optima a little bit, but it, the Optima is a better all-around car, but it does have some negatives. Like, the transmission isn't nearly as responsive, responsive as the Mazda 6 is. Uh, 
the steering isn't as good, but it makes up for it in so many other ways that I would just edge it out by a little bit. And the truck is the King Tut, the Ford F-150. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I, I think what Ford's been able to do with that truck, <laughs> all aluminum, except for having a steel frame, nobody else has done it. They're going to go through some growing pains, you know, with resolving fit and finish, body panel gaps and all that shit. But that really is a forward, forward truck for once. And uh, I just need to get an F-350 in here with a diesel. Yeah. With like whatever they are, 850 or 900 pounds of torque. <laughs> right, yeah, just... I want to tow some. I want to tow everything. I want to rip somebody's house down with that. You want to roll some coal? <laughs> yeah, roll. I'm gonna rolling coal. <laughs> rolling coal all week. So the car of the year. Uh, it. I thought about this, and I really thought, well, the Mazda MX-5 probably should be because of the price point. It's lightweight. It has all the right suspension, the body, the chassis. Incredible sound system. The sound system's really good. Yes. Uh, but it gets edged out by Ford here because Ford did something that you would think nobody else, you would never think Ford would do, let alone nobody else has had the balls to do, and that is put a super high-revving V8 that makes a shitload of power with a manual transmission in a Mustang. That is a track-focused car. That feels like a track-focused car. <coughs> well, you know, I don't know. If you had the choice to drive one or the other on the track, the problem with me for those slow cars you have time to think too much. You have time, man, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> you know, did I let the dog out? The fast cars are the fast carts. You don't have time to think. It's just, it's automatic. Right. So that's, you know, I, when I was racing the other night, I thought about that. I'm like, you know, you're on those straightaways and you're just like. Falling asleep. And you don't have, you know, in the fast shit, you just don't have time to think about that. Right. You're like, damn, that sounds good. That's about the only thing you got to think about. Yeah, exactly. Or, Holy shit, I almost Kill myself on that corner. <laughs> right. There's Let's that, try it again. <laughs> there's that edginess factor. There's the danger. There's the risk. There's the adrenaline that gets generated by driving a faster car and one that's more visceral. And the GT350 is that. Well, I have less time to think and more reaction, I right. think. And they did it well. It's not like you could say, oh, okay, this is an American car. They don't know how to do a transmission or a clutch or a motor. I mean, this is top, top class, top, top notch. I mean, race car feeling legitimately. Now, I, of course, it's easy to say that it's great because one, we don't own one, and two, we don't know what's gonna break. Uh, right. You know, flat plane crank motors, historically, when they've been done, are more race designed, and they take a lot more work to keep running properly. So dependability, durability, longevity, I don't know, but if you sat a Miata and a GT350 next to each other, and you said, which car do you want to drive on a track? I'm going to take the GT350 pretty much over any car. And I think most people probably would. Yeah. Unless they're just scared of it. Yeah, maybe. But that's why I put the Miata in there as the affordable solution. Because if you don't have 50, oh, 60 grand that to burn. Great, I mean, it was fun to drive. It is a very fun car. So I don't want to not it. it feels like it. you're doing all that work and getting nothing <laughs> out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be a really fun car to wheel-to-wheel -wheel race with a shitload of those others on the track. It's just... Too slow. 